Section twelve of Hero and Leander. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Martin Giessen. Hero and Leander by Christopher Marlowe and George Chapman. Section twelve. The fifth Sestiad, part three. The tale of Terras continued because the parents of chaste eucharis exceeding hymens so might cross their bliss and as the world rewards deserts that law cannot assist with force so when they saw their daughter safe take vantage of their own praise hymens valour much nothing bestown hymen must leave the virgins in a grove far off from athens and go first to prove if to restore them all with fame and life he should enjoy his dearest as his wife this told to all the maids the most agree the riper sort knowing what tis to be the first month of a news so far derived and that to hear and bear news brave folks lived as being a carriage special hard to bear occurrence these occurrence being so dear they did with grace protest they were content to accost their friends with all their compliment for hymen's good but to incur their harm there he must pardon them this wit went warm to adolesce's brain a nymph born high made all of voice and fire that upwards fly her heart and all her forces nether train climbed to her tongue and thither fell her brain since it could go no higher and it must go all power she had even her tongue did so in spirit and quickness she much joy did take and loved her tongue only for quickness sake and she would haste and tell the rest all stay hymen goes one the nymph another way and what became of her i'll tell at last yet take her visage now moist-lipped long-faced thin like an iron wedge so sharp and tart as twere of purpose made to cleave love's heart well were this lovely beauty rid of her and hymen did at athens now prefer his welcome suit which he with joy aspired a hundred princely youths with him retired to fetch the nymphs chariots and music went and home they came heaven with applauses rent the nuptials straight proceed whilst all the town fresh in their joys might do them most renown first gold-locked hymen did to church repair like a quick offering burned in flames of hair and after with a virgin firmament the godhead proving bride attended went before them all she looked in her command as if form-giving cypria's silver hand gripped all their beauties and crushed out one flame she blushed to see how beauty overcame the thoughts of all men next before her went five lovely children decked with ornament of her sweet colours bearing torches by for light was held a happy augury of generation whose efficient right is nothing else but to produce to light 
the odd disparent number they did choose to show the union married loves should use since in two equal parts it will not sever but the midst holds one to rejoin it ever as common to both parts men therefore deem that equal number gods do not esteem being authors of sweet peace and unity but pleasing to the infernal empery under whose ensigns wars and discords fight since an even number you may disunite in two parts equal nought in middle left to reunite each part from other reft and five they hold in most especial prize since tis the first odd number that doth rise from the two foremost numbers unity that odd and even are which are two and three for one no number is but thence doth flow the powerful race of number next did go a noble matron that did spinning bear a husif's rock and spindle and did wear a weather's skin with all the snowy fleece to intimate that even the daintiest piece and noblest born dame should industrious be that which does good disgraceth no degree end of section twelve recording by martin geeson in hazelmere surrey